Hi, I'm Susan Taylor with Scripps Health in San Diego, California. Multiple sclerosis, or MS as it's called, is a chronic autoimmune disease that attacks the body's central nervous system. More than 400,000 people are diagnosed with it every year. What causes it? How do you treat it? Joining us to talk about this is Dr. Lewis Goodrich. He is a neurologist with the Scripps Clinic Medical Group in La Jolla, California. Doctor, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Um, so go into a little bit more detail. What is MS? So any function of the brain or spinal cord can be affected by MS. Uh, common symptoms could involve things like the optic nerve. Uh, if MS attacks the optic nerve, it can lead to loss of vision or blurry vision in one eye, sort of all the way up to blindness in that eye. Um, MS can also affect the, the ability to move the arms and legs or the sensation in the arms and legs balance, uh, control of urination, sort of any function of the brain or spinal cord could ultimately be impacted by this disease. And the symptoms are very different from person to person. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, so really no two people uh, have the same exact symptoms of MS. When we're looking at the disease, we see sort of spots or scars in the brain that are from these immune attacks. And really where those scars are is what determine the symptoms of the disorder. And so it really just comes down to which parts are of the brain or spinal cord are impacted in any specific person. And the symptoms can come and go, can they not? Yes. So the most common course of MS is what we call relapsing remitting MS. And so in relapsing remitting disease, people have periods of time we call relapses, where they experience a new neurologic symptom. Again, could be anything. Um, and then after that symptom presents, it may recover maybe not completely, but then there's a period in between where things are quiet until there's another clinical relapse with a new neurologic symptom. And how, how long would this last? I mean, would you have symptoms for a couple of hours or a couple of days, and then they go away for how long before they come back? So symptoms of a typical relapse will become apparent over the course of a day or so, and then can last really an indefinite amount of time um, our goal when someone is having a relapse is to treat them acutely with steroids to try to get them to recover more quickly. So what causes MS? So the body's own immune system mistakenly attacks myelin, which is the insulation around the nerve cells in the brain and the spinal cord. And when the myelin is attacked, those nerves don't conduct their electrical signals as well. That leads to almost short circuiting in the nervous system. And that leads to these uh, different clinical symptoms that people experience. So who is most at risk? So MS most commonly presents in people in their 20s and 30s, and then the condition persists uh, for the rest of a person's life. Usually the relapsing phase of the disease um, will naturally quiet down as people age. So usually around the mid-60s, MS should not cause new relapses from that point forward. Also, as with any autoimmune condition, it is more common in women than in men, about three times more likely in women. And does it get progressively worse over time for folks, you know, between the ages of 20 and 60? In the era before we had treatments to prevent relapses and attacks in MS, it was a progressive disorder. And um, the average time from diagnosis to wheelchair was only about 10 years. These days, when I meet a patient who's been newly diagnosed with MS, I tell them that with the therapies we now have, my goal is that it never affects them any more than it is in that moment in clinic. So a lot of other things can cause pain and numbness, um, muscle spasms. How do you know that, yeah, I need to go talk to a doctor about this? Yeah, so that is one of the challenges as an MS specialist is sometimes figuring out just based on symptoms, whether something is due to MS or due to any number of other things. Really what's helpful to sort it out uh, is an MRI scan, because on an MRI, we'd see very sort of typical appearing spots or lesions that suggest that somebody has MS, in which case that would potentially be the explanation for some or all of their symptoms. In addition to the MRI, are there other ways that you would diagnose MS? So usually um, MRI is the mainstay of, um, of really figuring it out. There are other potential tests that we sometimes do, like analyzing the spinal fluid. There are other blood markers we check, but really what we're looking for in MS is uh, scars or spots in the brain that are in different places over time. So how do you treat MS? 
Yeah, so treatment of MS has evolved over the years. Um, in the days before we had effective therapies, we used to tell people to expect from about 10 years from the time they were diagnosed that they would be disabled and maybe even need a wheelchair. These days, uh, with our therapies that we call disease-modifying therapies, because they change that, um, people can expect to live fairly normal lives. The way that the medications work is that they put the brakes on an overactive immune system to try to prevent further attacks. And so you're treating folks with medication? Yes. And what about physical therapy and speech therapy and reorganizing your activities around your period of fatigue? Yeah, so um, there's sort of two different things that we address in MS clinic. One is the disease modifying therapy to make sure that we're really preventing new attacks, controlling the disease. But then we also have to deal with the consequences of any attacks that happened before we started therapy or before someone was diagnosed. And so that's where um, the role of you know physical therapy, pain management, um, you know lifestyle things like diet and exercise become hugely important. Can MS be cured? So not yet, although with the therapies that we now have, uh, we can expect uh, newly diagnosed patients to have a fairly normal life. Any final thoughts, doctor? As we've discussed, MS is a very treatable disorder these days. So really anybody who's experiencing concerning symptoms like, you know, problems using an arm or, you know, new numbness somewhere where it wasn't before, new balance problems, uh, new vision issues, really should talk to their doctor because you know if um, if it ends up being MS, it's a very treatable disorder. And the earlier that we treat it, um, the less damage can accumulate and the better outcomes uh, people will have. To improve your quality of life. Yeah. Doctor, thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. If you want more information on how to diagnose and treat MS, just click on the link or go to scripts.org forward slash videos. Want more critical information about your health? Please subscribe to our Scripps Health YouTube channel and follow us on social media at Scripps Health. At Scripps, we're here for good. I'm Susan Taylor. Thanks for joining us.